Today's episode is sponsored by our good friends at Mountain Rose Herbs. The folks at Mountain Rose Herbs are committed to providing us herbalists with high quality, organic and sustainable herbs, spices, essential oils, bulk ingredients, and much more. But quality isn't the only thing they're passionate about. They consider the environmental and social impact of every business decision they make and are dedicated to keeping their business practices sustainable and ethical from start to finish. To Mountain Rose Herbs, people, plants, and planet are more important than profit. And Herb Rally Podcast listeners can get 15% off their order at mountainroseherbs.com with coupon code HERBRALLY15 at checkout. That's HERBRALLY15, all one word. So a huge thanks to Mountain Rose Herbs for sponsoring the podcast, and don't forget to use coupon code HERBRALLY15 for 15% off your next order. Now on to the show. Enjoy. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. The content in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to cure, diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. This information has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. We are not doctors, nor do we play one on the internet. Please seek advice from a qualified healthcare professional. Okay, MC Calico, take it away. Yeah. Smoking herbal blends. We need some mullin and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Mason Hutchinson. Welcome back to Herb Rally, your daily herbal podcast. We come out with new episodes five days a week, so be sure to tune in often. Our goal for the show is to help you along your herbalist journey no matter where you're at. We've got an archive of over 500 episodes, so feel free to peruse those episodes and you're bound to find something of interest. Uh, today I'm going to be reading Sarah Hazard's Lavender Monograph, and we have over 70 lengthy, epic, well-written monographs uh, on Herb Rally. So if you want to check those out, you could go to herbrally.com slash monographs. And as I mentioned, today I'll be reading Sarah Hazard's Lavender Monograph. So here we go. Lavender. Lavendula and Gustafolia. Common names, Lavendula, Lavender, Lavendin. Description and taxonomy. Lavender is a perennial plant native to Eastern Europe, Northern Africa, and the Mediterranean. It has narrow gray-green leaves and a long spike with purple flowers that are quite attractive to pollinators. The flowers are covered in star-shaped hairs. There are many genotypes, but English Lavender, Lavendula, and Gustafolia is the most commonly grown and used. The plant family is the Lamiaceae. And now we'll get into the history. So the word comes from Latin lavar, which is to wash, and was often associated with cleanliness ever since the Romans added it to their bath water. Lavendula vera, also known as El Kazama, oh my gosh, I'm gonna butcher some of these words, apologies. El Kazama in Morocco, where the dried flowers are an ingredient in an herb and spice mix known as top of the shop. In North Africa, lavender is used to protect the Kabyle women mistreated by their husbands. Ancient Egyptians used oil of lavender soaked linen and mummification casts that would last indefinitely. They wrapped the bodies with these casts and let them dry in the sun until the casts hardened. It was also used by ancient Egyptians for perfume and incense. Palsy drops, or lavender tincture, were used by the British Pharmacopoeia for more than 200 years as an effective herbal treatment for headaches and muscle spasm. Greek naturalist Dioscorides praised the medicinal benefits of lavender in the first century AD. In the Middle Ages, it was seen as an herb of love and was used to attract the opposite sex like an aphrodisiac. Ritual and Spiritual Uses In ritual use, lavender often represents love, protection, and purification. It is burned during childbirth and labor, as it is known to bring peace and tranquility. It is often a part of newborn blessing rituals because the scent brings feelings of joy and peace. During midsummer ritual, it is thrown into fires as an offering to the gods and goddesses. Parts used are the flowers, herbal actions, analgesic, anticonvulsive, antidepressant, antimicrobial, antiseptic, antispasmodic, antitoxic, carminative, colagogue, choleretic, cordial, cytophylactic, deodorant, diuretic, amenagogue, hypotentive, insecticide, nervine, parasiticide, rubefacient, sedative, stimulant, 
Satirific, Tonic, Vermifuge, Vulnerary. The energetics are drying, bitter, and cooling. And constituents. Lavender has over 100 constituents, including tannins, volatile, coumarins, flavonoids, ursolic acid. Uh, the essential oil contains borneol, garanol, lavendulol, linalol, aranol acetate, lavendulol acetate, linalol acetate, cineol, caryophylline, limonene, and pinene. So the preparation and dosage, aromatherapy skincare applications, and a carrier oil with dilution ratio of 1 to 2% essential oil to 1% carrier, and 1 to 2 teaspoons of the flower for 8 ounces of water as an effusion up to 3 times a day, and 1 dropper of tincture up to 3 times a day. Cultivation. Lavender does best in sunny locations and needs to be planted in light, dry, well-drained soil as it really doesn't like soggy roots. Because of this, it does well in rock gardens. Lavender can be started from seed, but it is best grown from cuttings. Growing lavender from seeds takes much longer and the cultivars need to be propagated asexually from cuttings. It prefers a more neutral pH of around 7. The best time for cuttings is from August to November when the stems are semi-hardened and have not experienced a freeze. Heavy clay is not suitable for lavender, so sand and compost is best for planting. Lavender is grown primarily for the oil, and the flower stems can be harvested and dried upside down in bundles. Medicinal Benefits Lavender is mostly known for its nervine properties. It is incredibly relaxing to the nervous system. Just the aroma itself can help reduce stress and anxiety in most people. In a study published by the journal Phytomedicine, lavender oil was shown to be just as effective as the pharmaceutical drug lorazepam and showed no side effects. Other studies confirmed it can help with restlessness, nervousness, depression, and insomnia. Of course, you need to check with your doctor before replacing any prescription with an alternative therapy. You don't need to take a lavender pill to feel the effects. Like I mentioned earlier, just the aroma alone can offer instant stress relief. This fragrant purple flower is commonly used in bath salts or bath blends to provide a relaxing atmosphere to de-stress and let go. The essential oil can also be added to a diffuser or personal inhaler so that you can breathe in the relaxing aroma throughout the day. Headaches are often treated with lavender. A tincture of lavender, also known as palsy drops, was noted as an effective herbal treatment in the British Pharmacopoeia for more than 200 years up until the 1940s. It was used by physicians to relieve headaches, muscle spasms, and nervousness. Lavender essential oil can also be combined with peppermint and eucalyptus essential oils. Uh, can be used in a compress for the forehead when a headache strikes. A lavender herbal salve can be made as well for a quick go-to remedy for tension headaches. Fainting and dizziness can be calmed with a lavender smelling salts or a lavender compress. In the Victorian age, people revived themselves by sniffing lavender and camphor salts and inhaled the aroma from lavender stuffed pillows. Aromatherapy. The essential oil of lavender is extracted by steam distillation from the flowers. Its scent is floral with some sweet herbal notes. To be honest, I wasn't always a lavender essential oil fan until I started studying aromatherapy and aromatics. I once thought it was strictly good for calming the nerves, but I was pleasantly surprised when I found it had numerous other properties that make it one of my top choices to have in my back pocket. Of course, most people associate this oil with its calming effects, making it great for those who are suffering from stress, anxiety, insomnia, or emotional upset. Lavender essential oil is also great for burns. Now, when I say burns, I say it with caution because it depends on, what, on the severity of the burn. But for minor or first degree burns, you can apply one drop diluted in a bit of aloe gel or on its own, only if you are not sensitive, directly on the burn as soon as possible. If I do this right away after burning myself, I find that I often have no pain within a few hours and the redness is gone. It can also be used in hydrosol form to apply to sunburn, which soothes and relieves the pain. For severe burns, please seek help from a medical professional as there can be further damage that needs to be looked at. This oil is also an antispasmodic, making it great for blends used for pain and muscle spasms. I have personally used it many times in massage oil for muscle tension and spasm, and it's worked great. It is often found in headache and tension blends and is especially effective when combined with marjoram essential oil. Lavender essential oil is suitable for most, if not all, skin types. It is a cell regenerator and it can help to prevent scarring and stretch marks. 
It can relieve many rashes, sun-damaged skin, and varicose veins. It has been known to also relieve the itch associated with bug bites. It has been used in hair products, soaps, and facial oils. Lavender essential oil is a middle note and it blends well with the following essential oils. Bay, bergamot, chamomile, citronella, clary sage, geranium, jasmine, lemon, mandarin, nutmeg, orange, patchouli, pine, thyme, and rosemary. As with any essential oil, it is not recommended to take internally due to the potent nature of essential oils. Allies. Lavender has a few allies depending on what you are using it for. I have found that the lavender and marjoram essential oils are the best duo at relieving tension-related headaches. Chamomile and lavender are perfect for calming tea or an herbal bath. They also work wonders for anxiety and aromatherapy applications. Lavender will pretty much go well with most other nervines, including lemon balm and oat straw. Cautions and contraindications. Lavender is contraindicated during pregnancy due to the aminagog effects that it has. Also, the oil should be used with caution for those with low blood pressure. Culinary use. This fragrant little purple flower is often used in a variety of culinary treats. You can find it infused into ice cream, pastries, syrups, chocolates, drinks, and desserts. One of my personal favorites was when I stumbled onto some fresh baked lavender, rosemary, and sea salt ciabatta bread. Another favorite is lavender sea salt caramel. It's also a key ingredient in the popular herb blend, Herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence is a traditional blend of aromatic herbs common in Southern France, especially during the summer months. The herbs typically used in this blend are bay, thyme, savory, basil, marjoram, oregano, tarragon, rosemary, and fennel. Lavender was not actually one of the original ingredients, but is often used anyways, as it truly resembles the Provence region. This delicious blend is great for flavoring meats, pizza sauces, salad dressing, soups, or roasted veggies. So I'm not going to read out uh, the recipe that Sarah has here, but uh, she has a strawberry lavender spritzer. And if you'd like to check out that recipe, I'll leave a link in the show notes to the actual monograph. Uh, or otherwise, it's herbrally.com slash monographs slash lavender. And then to finish things off, she's got the category called home use. Not only does lavender have great medicinal and culinary uses, but it's also a fragrant tool to use around the home. Lavender sachets can be used in place of scented dryer sheets to add a natural floral aroma to your freshly dried laundry. Just make sure they are completely closed shut. Trust me on this. You can buy them already made online or easily make them yourself with a cotton muslin bag and some string. They can also be placed under your pillow at night to promote restful sleep. Lavender sachets can also be placed in drawers and closets to repel moths and freshen up linens. Lavender essential oil can also be used in room sprays to bring peace and tranquility in times of stress or at the end of a long day. I personally use my relax spray on my bed sheets every night when I'm snuggling into bed. It definitely clears my mind and relaxes me into bedtime. There really is so much room for creatively including lavender in your daily life. I highly recommend you picking up a bundle of freshly dried lavender at your local market or backyard and having some fun with it. So a huge thanks to Sarah Hazard for contributing that monograph to all of us. And just to give Sarah a plug, her and her husband, Colin, have a, um, a, a company called Passion House Media. And basically they provide video services to companies in the Colorado area. Uh, so if you're in the Colorado area, or perhaps even beyond, check them out at passionhousemedia.com. And yeah, I've worked with Sarah on various projects over the year, and I, I highly recommend her creative services uh, in general. So again, check them out at passionhousemedia.com. And that's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.